Hello, today we're going to look at the new feature in AVSNAP 6.4 version, and that new feature is the label designer. We now can design labels that can be applied directly to cables or can be printed on the page as needed. And today we're going to learn how to create labels for cables in your project. So in edit menu, we have a selection now called label designer. We're going to go ahead and open it. In the label designer, you have a manufacturer name and part number, and you, and you can add new labels to the label designer. So you can look at the file structure of the label itself and then open the file, specific file. But in our case, we just want to add or modify the label. I went on the website, and on the website, I selected specific label. This is from Brady, self-laminating TLS 2200, and this is a part number for it, PTL 21427. So that's a label we can design. So let's go ahead and put in Brady as a manufacturer. And let's put the part number here also. So here's our design. And now we're going to adjust it to match the requirements of the label. In this case, we're going to have the width 0.75. The horizontal spacing between the labels is one inch because the label uh, width is one inch. Left margin, we're going to put 0.125 because the printable area is 0.75 inches but the width of the label is one inch. The height of the label is 2.5 inches. The top margin is zero. And vertical spacing is 2.5 inches. We're gonna have one row and one column because this label is on the roll. And we selected inches. In general, you can use inches or millimeters in this design, and you can select which one is better suits for you. Once we finished everything, we're going to say add this label to the database and we're going to save it. And that pretty much completes the design of the label. So now that the label is completed and database is updated, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to add some components here and we're going to run the cable from these components, okay? And see how the label will be applied to these cables. So let's go ahead and put two parts here. And we have the SDI uh, transmitter and SDI receiver. So we're going to connect them together with the cable, just like this. Note that the cable on the left-hand side has a square. That's the beginning of the cable. And the right side of the cable is round. That's the end of the cable. And that's important because we need to know from what uh, connector you go to what connect on your components. So now that we have our cable, we're gonna print, we're gonna click on the cable and press shortcut K. A couple of things that we can fill out here. We can include the cable in the cable list. We can also come to part number here and we can des decide if we wanna add additional part number. So let's say if I'm gonna put uh, part number CB3000-012 and the manufacturer is Altinex. That's a cable and www.altinx.com. So once you put this in, it goes into the database and we're gonna put here 12 foot cable. Because it's in database, it will be available for all the other cables. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And let's assume that I'm gonna do a couple of more of these connections. So I'm gonna add one and two. So let's go ahead and run the cable from one and two here, one cable and another cable. And now we go click on the cable and press K. And from here I can select the part number. It will automatically fill out Altinex and, and, and the website. And the only thing I need to do is to put it 12 feet. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna select the part number. It will put a manufacturer and it's including the cable. Now it's possible that you may have additional cables on the project. So let's say additional other cables that you don't want to include in your label printing, but they still need to be for reference. So you can go to the properties and say, do not include cable in the cable list. Press K for properties and remove including cable list check mark. To verify that everything's okay, I'm gonna press letter Y. And as you can see, 
it gives you information where it's going, where it's coming from, where is it going. And uh, I noticed that I did not put the uh, length of the cable here, which is okay. So let me go ahead and do this. It's 12 feet. Okay. And there's a couple of other things that didn't make it here. If we zoom on the snap point and double click on the snap point, we have SDI one rack one. That's from designated. That's what's going to be printed on the label from location. And uh, so let's see what we're going to do here on this unit. So this rack two, so I'm going to mark it to rack two. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to mark it rack three. So now we have a full definition where the cables are coming from. We're going to come back here and say, what is that? Where is it going to? Which is two. This is rack two. And then double click here. I'm going to go ahead and change it to rack three. And I'm going to come back and change it to rack four. All right, with all of this set, we now can apply the label to this design. So I'm going to click on the label tool on the left hand side and draw label. I don't know what size it is, so I'm just going to draw it here randomly. It will come up with the properties. So I'm going to go select Brady label and I'm going to select manufacturer part number and all of these numbers will be adjusted here. I also going to select that I'm going to print label for cables just on this page. Okay, it says from label page. That's your label page. Okay. So as you can see, this label has been automatically adjusted. I turned the grid on and put on a grid. But I need to know where the printing area is. So going back to the design, to the property of the label, I can see that the printing area is right here. Printable area dimension. And, but printable area height is 0.75 inch. So I need to put, a, I need to put a, some kind of line showing me where the label ends, okay? So this, in this case, I'm gonna use a, a guideline. So Control G puts a couple of guidelines for me right here. They're not printable, so you can come back here and say, okay, 0.75 inches. I'm on 0.1 inch grid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, point seven five. There it is. This is my printable area. Let's go ahead and put some text here. And I'm gonna say from. Let's put this in the corner here and extend it all the way to the end. And there's my printing from. Copy paste. I also need to print two. Okay. So now I need to connect this label to all of the snap points. So let's do it by copy pasting this text, double clicking on it, going to full editor and selecting from field, okay? This from is used with a cable object. So from, it's a shortcut that pulls the data from the cable and inserts it here. We're gonna do the same thing, copy it here. Move it a little bit up, double click, and insert two shortcut. So there it is. Our label is now complete. It's from, and it should substitute the number here. And it's two, it should substitute the number here. And we should have a label complete. If you don't want to have it on the page, you can press, select everything, press X to group it, and just move it to the side. So let's go ahead and go to printing function, control P, and select the PDF creator just so I can print it on the PDF file instead of the regular printer. And we need to also set up a page height and width. I already preset it to one inch by 2.5 inch, but let's just figure out where I did this. Go to properties, advanced. In advanced, you will see the postscript script custom page size. Click Edit Custom Page, and here you set the size. If you have a printer that has already page size 2.5 by 1, then you don't need to do anything because that will automatically default because AVSnap will read the page size from the printer. Now that we have it, we're going to click 
check mark says only print labels. And you can see that the label is outlined where it's going to be printed. Let's go ahead and print it. It's um, on the desktop. We will print it to a desktop. So go ahead and save it. And let's see what the PDF will look like. And sure enough, here's our label. And the next page now it prints two the same labels. So you can put on each end of the cable one label and then second label and so forth. So all of them you can see it changes from one to two and then three to four and that's it. So here's, here's your complete design and the label printer is ready to go. And that's how you use the new feature, which is label designer. Thank you.